981 men went through the 9th New York Cavalry, and out of that, they lost 633 officers and men through battle of wounds and disease. They had uh, 16 men die in prisoner of war camps, and seven men received the Congressional Medal of Honor. Uh, they were involved in 141 engagements. Uh, some of them were uh, the Peninsula Campaign, um, Cedar Creek, and one of the most significant would have been Gettysburg. And at the Battle of Gettysburg, uh, the 9th New York Volunteer Cavalry was credited with fighting the first shots for the Union side, uh, receiving the first casualty, which would have been uh, Corporal Cyrus James. And a corporal would have had stripes such as my son Mitchell has on with two stripes here. Um, these are both troopers, my son Adam and my son Mitchell. And my, uh, my wife over here, my youngest son Al Alex is not, it's over on the side over there I believe. And uh, well at Gettysburg, um, Cyrus James was uh, where, he was, where he fell is where the 9th New York placed their monument. So if you ever go to Gettysburg and visit the battlefield and you're on uh, Buford Avenue near the Peace Light Memorial, uh, you'll see the 9th New York Cavalry's monument. That's where Cyrus James fell. Uh, in that battle, a man by the name of um, Perry Nichols, Private Perry Nichols from Asheville, who's actually buried in the Maple Grove Cemetery in Asheville, on his tombstone is, it reads, uh, Captured First Prisoner, Battle of Gettysburg, July 1st, 1863. Um, another first was uh, the first shots fired for the Union side at the Battle of Gettysburg, who was another man from Asheville. Uh, his name was Altheus Hodges. He was a corporal. And the story is that he, Altheus Hodges and his and two other privates were on advance picket duty in Willoughby Run, about a mile in advance of where the main line was, was posted, where the monument is. A mile in advance of that is a small stream uh, heading towards Hare Tavern. What he saw was uh, uh, Confederates approaching through the fog about 5.30 in the morning. And at that time, it was kind of dark and, and hazy. Um, so he sent two privates in different directions to warn the main line and reserves as to what they saw. As he's, in, our, in the history of the 9th New York, as it's read, as he's watering his horse in Willoughby Run, the Confederates fired upon him. As his, with his returning the shots, opened the Battle of Gettysburg. Um, so that's, that's kind of like, for the for Chautauqua County, the first are pretty significant there at the Battle of Gettysburg. Um, they were also at Appomattox Courthouse where the surrender took place of General Lee and General Grant. The 9th New York had a company of soldiers that actually transferred, helped to uh, escort General Grant to that ceremony. Uh, they were mustered out in uh, July of 1863, or I'm sorry, 1865, July 17th, and uh, finally came home. But that was a few months after the battle was, or after the war was finally over with. Um, we do have a reenactment coming up in uh, first weekend in August. We'll be at Westfield again, um, trying to help celebrate our 200th anniversary for Chautauqua County. We'll also be at the Suites here in Mayville the second weekend in August. I believe that's a timeline from Revolutionary War all the way up to modern day, right? I think that's how it's going to be. Um, so we'll be here a couple times this summer. We've got other reenactments going on. That one there did not go that far, so that's I think it's got to be something. Yeah. It would make sense if it... It just depends on what day he graduates. He's getting married that Friday night. We're here with, uh, what's your name? Uh, Janelle Webb. Janelle Webb from uh, Webb's Candies, and it looks like you've got quite a selection here. I do. I have, uh, we have our, all of our Easter molds are out in the store right now. We have some bark. We have chocolate peanut butter bark, we have plain chocolate, and we have our pecan chocolate bark. We also do a lot of gifts in the store now. We're working on our jewelry line. We've got some bags in the store, some different um, souvenirs that we have in the store, all Chocolate Lake souvenirs. Uh, have you had, has Webb's Candies been in business? Webb's Candies has been in business since 1940, believe it or not. They started out in a little tiny store right around the corner from the hardware. They started making goat milk fudge. Uh, they went on to making the big suckers, the all-day suckers. They sold them down on Route 5, um, down on Route 5 doing um, the little stands, the fruit stands. They moved on to some different kind of fairs, and then they started, they had a business down in Florida, and then right into Mabel, right into the center of Mabel. Okay. And the Fountainette. Do you remember the Fountainette? Yeah, they have a big 
they found that that they started doing all that in. Okay. How long have you been the candy store been down there at Webbs itself now? Uh, 1973, I think, right around in that area, I think they started there. But they had the Fountainette right in town, um, right about 1940, right around near the war there. He left, Mr. Webb left, and Nadine ran the store. All right, thank you. It, it all looks so good. I think I'm going to have to have a piece I before I leave. Try it. It's delicious <laughs> chocolate. Like I said, we've got all of our chocolate Easter candy out now. We're ready for business. We have the Easter Bunny coming in on the 16th of April. He'll be out there. So if any of the kids want to come down and see the Easter Bunny, he'll be there. All right, we'll look forward to that. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Put your hand off there. <laughs> You've got a Chairman of the Bemis Snow Ferry Bicentennial. Uh, we'll be celebrating July 8th, 9th, and 10th uh, between Bemis and Snow. I hope everybody can come out and see us. Also on the 23rd at the casino in Bemis, we're having a dinner dance. This is going to be a big thing, limited to probably 325 people. Some of the activities we're going to have at the Bicentennial, uh, besides ferry rides, all the days, um, we're going to uh, have a car cruise in, um, that'll be at the North Harmony offices and Old Bridge Road. We have a motorcycle uh, bike and cruise, um, motorcycles, same place. We're going to have pie sales. Um, I think we're working with uh, Dan Delfra at the floating stage. Uh, we're going to have a show for that. Um, some of the things right now I'd like to show you. Uh, fresh off the press. This is a fairy tale. Art Thomas um, worked for the town of North Harmony. He was our uh, historian. Um, just passed away, which was really uh, sad. He never got to see his book, but uh, he put a lot of time into this. And uh, it's on sale today over here with the town of North Harmony. Uh, it's full of pictures of the history of 200 years of the ferry. And I know uh, we're selling merchandise. This is our Bemis Snow Ferry logo. Uh, we're going to be selling these through the Viking Trader. Which is a famous point. Uh, we can also order them right over here with the North Harmony Group. Uh, they have the pictures of the ferry and uh, information on North Harmony. <laughs> We're going to do happy birthday for the county. And my young friend, Mrs. Alday, is going to play the fiddle for us. Welcome everybody to our great birthday party. Everybody loves a clown and we love a party. I want you to join us today and thank you for your patronage and wish everybody a wonderful new year. Have a great day. Goodbye, Rainbow the Clown. Thank you. This man's me for me. This man's your land. This land's my land. From California. Thank you. 
Welcome, Bill. Thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here today uh, to share history with everybody, uh, especially since our county's got such a rich history. And what we have today is we have a display of many of the different items that someone on the colonial frontier in the 1650s all the way up through the 1850s might use uh, to cook and eat with. And now uh, everything we have on our table is a reproduction, uh, but it follows uh, the specifications for actual uh, pieces that can be found in museums. In fact, we even have some spoons that were uh, made by a friend of mine in Maine, Ken Hamilton, and he was actually able to get an original spoon mold and cast up uh, some pewter spoons. So this is an actual 1700 vintage spoon uh, made from the original mold. And we also have some pieces of uh, blown glassware from the Jamestown and Williamsburg area uh, where they had some of those glass making factories there. And then we have right here is a kind of an interesting piece of equipment. We have different pieces of what was called treenware. And treenware was uh, eating utensils that were made out of different types of wood. Uh, whether it be a bowl, a big trencher, spoons, ladles, uh, anything they could get their hands on to make an eating utensil. And then we have different types of forged knives. We have the different pottery ware down here. Um, the different types and styles of uh, pottery that was being made during the 17th and 18th centuries. Uh, from the greenware from the French, we have the, the redware which is more of an English style. And then at the end of the table we have different styles of cooking pots. Uh, from copper and brass uh, to the sheet metal that was that was forged out, um, different styles, different nationalities. All of these things were being used and traded on the frontier um, during the 17th and 18th centuries. I got a question. Your spoons, they seem to be really big. Was a lot of stuff back then more liquidy, like soups, or is it just well? I think what, what we have to think of is, because you're right, this is more of a tablespoon size than it is a, a teaspoon size, which we're normally used to eating with. Uh, this particular spoon size is pretty much standard for that time period, and you have to realize the spoon was used for most everything. You, w you might not have a fork with you, but you would always at least have a spoon with you. And the spoon you could use, uh, you know, like you said, a lot of soups and stews and stuff like that, things that were thrown together in a, in a company pot. Uh, at the end of the table, we have what we call a company pot, and that was...